is Jeremiah. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're, uh, we're going to get bounce around as we finish a lot of work here that we got started uh, pertaining to Psalm 1, 2, and Proverbs 1. And we have, we just got started on Mark. And we're going to get into probably 12, 13 or so today in Matthew. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. We are going streamline now, and uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going streamline. We're going more direct, and we're going to re go through a lot of scriptures now. We're going to use these re pre-recorded uh, Bible uh, uh, recordings. Okay, take a break here. As you get ready and I get ready, as we greet you in the only name given, have me a little bit of water here, one moment. Now, let's get going. Now, this is Jeremiah. We are ready to go. We have Psalm 1, Psalm 2, Proverbs 1. And we'll get back to Mark probably tomorrow. For those of you who are interested or following along, we have the Babylon lesson coming up. Which is Babylon philosophy or Babylon uh, ideas, ideology, okay? And I just got started on it and I'm very happy with some progress we, we've made. Uh, the Babylon lesson will not be ready until next year. It, it's a big one. I'm going to talk about and I'm going to share with you a lot of principles and points pertaining to uh, the world's thinking and so forth. The in, the institutions and so forth, okay? And uh, I'm very happy with that. It's um, it's not an entirely, let's find out what's wrong. We're, we're going to find out what's wrong, and we're going to compare it with what's right. And um, and that's that's still a Bible study. I mean, we're, we're going to do a lot of examining of, of things that we don't really necessarily need to examine. The Bible says to expose them, uh, and, uh, and that's what we're doing. We're not necessarily giving a reproof. Uh, we're giving more of a a reproach. So, but we will insert some reproof and maybe a rebuke or two. So, uh, with admonitions. So we will attack these people in a proper proper manner. Okay. We're going to step on a lot of toes, but that has to be done. That's the way it goes. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. Let's listen to Psalm chapter 1 and 2, and then I'll give a review over both of those chapters. Remember, we're going to start listening to more scriptures now, and as this ministry goes on, we'll be listening to a lot of scriptures. And then I'll have a few things to say about them, and then move on. Uh, what I will usually do for those of you who are just joining in. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to give a New Testament perspective on some Old Testament ideas or paragraphs or subjects and so forth. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. And uh, for instance, Proverbs doesn't even sound like Proverbs when I get to it. In other words, we're, we're into the New Testament bottom line. Uh, the Master said, uh, greater than Solomon is here. So that when we go to the New Testament, we, we you get the bottom line. You go to the Old Testament, you need to screen it a little. In, in, you know, on certain levels, you you have to, or you should, uh, if you want to be accurate, okay? You want to be straight, like I want this uh, curtain rod turner, uh, Venetian blind turner, to align itself and look straight. Jeremiah's here, let's get going. We're going to listen to Psalm 1 and 2, then I'm going to give you a quick review on those two chapters. Remember, we are not we are not going through everything in the chapters. I'm going to pinpoint a few things, and then I'm going to move on. I, this is my second time through Psalm 1 and 2 in this uh, service. That's how important Psalm 1 and 2 are. They're ginormous. Um, uh, in, in, in this particular Protestant perspective of sound doctrine as the main deal. Sound doctrine in this ministry is the main deal. Just 
if that is germane to red letters commandments not so much prophecy not so much history not so much science well I've decided to focus a lot on science though science is not necessarily germane to living bread however I decided and maybe dr. Jim had an influence on me my a gentleman used to teach right across the hall from me I'd look across the hall and there's dr. Jimmy and what a wonderful nice guy and well learned in the in the earth sciences and so forth now which unfortunately he made a few well we all make mistakes in certain areas but he made a few mistakes that are that are pretty critical in terms of science itself you need to start from square one and it's kind of surprising that Jim and some other people did not get the the basic grammatical situation of the word is elementary or a B sedere and they didn't they didn't get it some people and of course we're not picking on dr. Jim but you've got to get middle C on the piano fixed before you go to Thelonious Monk and Mozart you've got to get the basics done first if you try to jump ahead all you're going to do is just look weird you've got to get the basics let's listen to Psalm chapter 1 and 2 ready this is Jeremiah we greet you in the only name given amongst men let's go let's go let's go I guess Christian wanted by makeup or something. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Okay, that's Psalm 1. Let's listen to that one more time. You ready? The Book of Psalms, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now there you go. And we sit back and think about that for a while as we as we get to chapter two. Let's go to chapter two. Psalm chapter two. This is King James Bible Red Letter Edition, which we pump here as the only way to go. Okay. Psalm two. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So there we have two short psalms that begin in the book. And what we have is some very significant stuff going, some very significant uh, teachings going on here. And let's just talk about that as we get into Psalm number one and two. Now this, of course, is means Psalm number one and two. These are psalms that were written 
by the great 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 grandfather of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on his human body side uh, which is the son of man and that from Mary and so forth but here we have this gentleman giving us two um, stories to start out these 150 um, discourses um, and they're basically uh, separate subjects most of the time one or two of them are repeated but the th here's the deal we're going to I'm going to share with you real briefly what these two chapters mean in in many other respects I will not go over everything and here, uh, let me remind you what I what I do here is we we relate everything to soul salvation first Throughout my life, I listened to Bible teachers, and they would they would mention things such as some of the things that are in chapters one and two here, and, and and they would mention them without really tying in what it means for salvation. You were never supposed to study your Bible without looking through the lesson as the story. Even Esther it doesn't matter in, in reference to eternal soul salvation. And when you, when you don't do that, it makes you, uh, you can't get an A in the class. And in many ways, you can't get a B in the class. When it comes to your uh, um, comprehension of what you're supposed to teach. It's, and, and, and I can give you some examples. Let's get into that. Now, I'm going to take a break here. Well, I'm going to take a break and have a, some water without turning the, the camera off. Give me one moment here. Pardon me. As, as you think about these first two chapters, it, it's impossible to go through these two chapters really quick unless you're like, you know, a super brainy kind of person. There's a lot of information, especially in Psalm number two. The reason why we're tackling these chapters is because they're, they're some of the deepest parts of your Bible and some of the most significant parts. Unfortunately, you, you, you have to concentrate and really go through every step and every subject in order for you to fully comprehend what's going on. So the best thing to do in general for someone like me, a general Bible teacher, is to go through a few points and move on. Now, the last time I went through these uh, two chapters, I mentioned things a little bit differently than I do now, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll probably go through chapters 1 and 2 again next year because they're heavy hitters. I, I hit the heavy hitters uh, once or twice a year. The real heavy hitters like the rapture, agape, love, uh, amazing grace, and stuff like that, we hit that hard a lot. We, we, we really go to that all over and over again. We, we've been hitting re repentance and baptism a lot here recently, and we've done that in the past. And we need to do that. We have to talk about your sadness for your sin and your turn to living a pure, uh, a holy life and so forth. We, we, we do this over and over again because we have to and we should. Now, as far as going over it too much, maybe, uh, I don't think we're going to do that. We, we're going to get into some of the uh, uh, more heavier things uh, to leave uh, the discussion of your turn and your initiation and, and so forth. Okay? Parts of your turn, you never leave. In other words, initiation, repentance, and baptism are not something that you necessarily leave. You, you just move on a little. Because you never leave baptism. Never. You, you're always lowered than you were before you were baptized. Before you were baptized, you're basically on your own with the devil. When you came to Jesus Christ, he is now permanent uh, supervisor. And you're buried in his will. Absolutely buried. That's water, but it basically means the earth, or you dunked yourself, and you're now going to voluntarily fall on the stone, and the stone is going to work with you. With that humility and that and that gentleness and, and that open to the truth attitude, we have a winner on our hands, and that attitude must be part of your initiation and throughout eternity, more, more along the lines of uh, your earth walk. 
if you're in heaven in the presence of Jesus Christ and there's no sin anywhere, uh, and th that means everything's like hunky dory. Everything is done. You, there's no faith anymore. Faith is for the earth, it's not for heaven. Now, certain aspects of the Christian faith are still in heaven, but as far as you exercising faith, that's gone. Okay? The concepts of faith, many of them, are not ever going anywhere. But as far as you exercising confidence in God, uh, that's gone. Because he's right there in front of you. <laughs> and the devil's totally gone forever. That's one reason why the Lord is not that much interested in having the devil out of your life as a Christian 100%. Because pretty soon he's going to be gone. He's, he's gone forever. So, and the Lord knows that. And he thinks about things like that. Because, see, God thinks a little differently than we do. And that we're here to start thinking more like God than we used to. Because God sees, you know, he saw the, he saw the Pharisees who were, who were giving him a really ba a bad time. Trying to murder him. You know, not only is he almighty God, but he's a super nice guy. You know, Jesus Christ. And why do you want to murder the nice guy? You know, so many people are just pure scum. You know, on, on this earth, and, and here they are bothering. Instead of bothering murderers and you know, and, and, the, and the boot licking Herod that, that they have as their little leader, their little boot lickers, you know, for Herod, who's a wicked guy, and so is the entire basic Roman uh, aristocracy. Why aren't they bothering them? So they're going after a guy going around healing people who are who are deadly sick. These people, oh, you think about them, and it's just sickening. You know, and, and for them to go after him, you know, it, 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 it goes back to the point uh, when the master says, it's better for you to tie a millstone around your head and throw it into the ocean or into the deep waters. Why? Because you're going after people who are caring people. And that's the dumbest thing you can do for Judgment Day. It's going to be the worst day for the people like, Hitler and Satan and you know and 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 popes and cardinals who helped who helped uh, uh, sign an agreement in 1933 to to be financial partners with Hitler and all these people that that, that were out there with power and and, and, and or, or the Pope Leo who who, who slaughtered 40,000 people in one day who were Protestants and then they celebrated the, the same night. These very very wicked people they're going to find out that everything they did. Is coming back on them, all in equation. It, you know, you you're not going to get away with anything. And the worst thing you can do on your record, as far as eternal punishment is is concerned, obviously from the mouth of the master, is go and harm people who are nice people, who are who are helping people. That's the worst, as they say in America, that's the worst nerd thing you could do. It's just really, really dumb. If you go to Chicago and you attack some gang members who are killing people and something, that might be a little different, I would think, than going after people who are uh, helping an old lady cross the street. And, and, and essentially, that's what hell does. The Bible says that hell basically goes after people who are doing the, the Beatitudes that we looked at in Matthew chapter 5. They look for people who are very kind, caring people to attack. And so it's almost like it's their last hurrah. They're very wicked people. They're haters, as they say. And so they're having their last bit of gangster fun. I had that movie called, what is it called, White Heat or something, where the gang member, he, he just goes totally wicked. And he gets up on the mountain and he goes, Mama, I'm, I'm on top of the world or something. And, and he's a, he's a, uh, and he's just a really bad gangster, and he's just going out sh shooting a machine gun. You know, a lot of people who hurt people they do that. Right before they're getting ready to be captured, they go and hurt more people because they know it's over. So they're just going to just continue with wickedness, and all they're doing is just adding more fuel to their fire because that's what the Libra scale means. The Libra scales mean that this is going to be fixed. That you, you want two steps to the right, you're going to pay for two steps to the right.
I'm going to shut down. We'll be right back. Maranatha.